Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am General Novel. This edition Stop Stories. The Minister for Commerce lauds the nation's youth for their business drive as Global Entrepreneurship Week is launched. A medical team is deployed to help manage the outbreak of COVID-19 at the Bodley Correctional Facility and winners of the 2021 Creole Poem Competition are awarded. The St. Lucia Chamber of Commerce, Industry and Agriculture, in collaboration with strategic partners on Monday 8th November, officially launched Global Entrepreneurship Week. The week is recognized as one of the biggest celebrations of innovators and job creators who launch startups that bring ideas to life, drive economic growth and expand human welfare. During this week, people the world over via local, national and global activities are inspired to explore their potential as self-starters and innovators. Honorable Emma Hippolyte, Minister for Commerce, Manufacturing, Business Development, Cooperatives and Consumer Affairs, explained that the spirit of entrepreneurship is alive and well in St. Lucia, especially amongst the youth. Recently, we have seen at the ministry an influx in the number of young persons taking the bold step of registering their businesses. This is very heartwarming for us at the ministry, as this is one of the targeted groups in our upcoming interventions. We do believe that the youth can make a meaningful contribution to society and also provide a livelihood for themselves instead of seeking employment. In response to the challenges facing the youth, our Prime Minister has placed youth high on our agenda with the Youth Economy Program, which plans to provide tailored incentives in the form of grants and low interest loans that the youth can benefit from. In the meantime, I am imploring you to take advantage of any opportunity that would assist your business in its growth and development. Entrepreneurs, young and old, just get ready and get moving. Activities for the week range from large-scale competitions and events to intimate networking gatherings, connecting entrepreneurs to potential collaborators, mentors, and even investors, introducing them to new possibilities and exciting opportunities. Global Entrepreneurship Week over the years has inspired millions to take the next step and explore their business potential, while gaining new connections and increased collaborations to strengthen their business and the entrepreneurial community. Karen Peter is the president of the St. Lucia Chamber of Commerce, Industry and Agriculture. The St. Lucia Chamber of Commerce, Industry and Agriculture, along with its affiliate programs of Junior Achievement and St. Lucia Youth Business Trust, are exceedingly pleased to once again hold, host and put on, in our own small way, Global Entrepreneurship Week, GEW. GEW 2021 comes at a time, in my view, where we truly need entrepreneurs. We need entrepreneurs to help us lead our country into a brighter future. We need entrepreneurs who are bold and brave. And while we see problems and challenges, they see opportunities and solutions. This movement, originally a government-backed campaign to connect youth, women, home workers, and ethnic minorities to enterprise opportunities, must now be an all-of-nation movement in St. Lucia. Global Entrepreneurship this year is being celebrated from the 8th to the 14th of November. The initiative launched in 2008 and has since grown to 125 countries with 24,008 partner organizations planning 33,846 activities that directly engage millions of participants every year. The Commission of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, in cooperation with the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, UNTAD, with support from the Secretariat for the Convention on Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, hosted a stakeholder consultation and validation event for the UNTAD OECS Blue Biotrade Project. More from Anisia Antoine. 
The dual thrust of the UNCTAD OECS Blue Biotrade Project focused on empowering small-scale coastal producers from the OECS member states to capitalize on the briskly increasing global demand for marine-based bioresources like the queen conch and high-value algae like sea moss. At the consultation and validation event, stakeholders were informed of the research findings and evidence-based policy solutions that will serve as a basis for delivering tailor-made capacity building activities in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada and St. Lucia. Chief Fisheries Officer Sarita Williams-Peter highlighted one of the most important objectives of the project as increasing economic opportunities for coastal communities through the reduction of trade barriers to regional and international markets. So right now what has been done, they've done a study to look at what the potential for trade and investment, export markets, etc., what it's, what the findings of that study is being uh, displayed today, and we are getting inputs from various fisher folk and other stakeholders into that study. That's very important because, as it starts with a study, it helps us understand where can we go with the industry what is the, what are the potentials for the industry for increasing opportunities for livelihoods um, in the sector one of the project's main findings is the possibility of trade with french caribbean countries economic consultant and coordinator of the blue biotrade project alexander govan emphasized the importance of continuing collaboration with the government of St. Lucia in order to maximize the value of the queen conch product, which includes the shells as well as the pearls found in the conch. St. Lucia is very special in terms of the queen conch production because you guys have very deep queen conch, which means it actually is of a very unique value. Um, unfortunately, you guys cannot legally export right now to Martinique. And if you were able to legally export to Martinique, St. Lucian producers would be able to capture a much, much higher value. So we're hoping right now to be able to figure out how to legally export um, to the European Union so that solution producers can get the highest possible price for their very, very special product. Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security and Rural Development, Honorable Alfred Prosper, expressed gratitude to the OECS and other stakeholders for their commitment towards implementing the Biotrade Project and harnessing the economic opportunities inherent in the effective stewardship of Caribbean marine resources. The participation of the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security, and Rural Development of St. Lucia in the Blue Biotrade Project reflects our commitment to pursuing the sustainable development of our ocean and fisheries resources. Today, I hope that you as key stakeholders and consult constituents involved in the conch trade share your opinion and views on how you would like this industry to move forward. We will be listening closely to what you have to say and incorporating these views into the work of the ministry. Minister Prosper stated that whilst the project's goal is to ensure that small-scale coastal producers within and outside of the selected Caribbean countries benefit from trade opportunities in the Queen Conch value chain, the importance of ensuring the sustainability of the ocean's resources should not be overlooked. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. For four consecutive days, beginning on Tuesday, November 2, 2021, a medical team from the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs, comprising Dr. Glenn Philipsian, Dr. Mark Melius, Dr. Marlon Ragana and Dr. Joanna Jabatiste, have been on the ground at the Bodily Correctional Facility carrying out COVID-19 antigen tests for both employees and the inmates. Director of Corrections Hilary Herman says contact tracing was identified as an area which needed to be urgently strengthened as full vaccination coverage is low in both instances of staff and inmates. By Thursday, November 4, 2021, the exercise had gone into day three with over 70 staff and approximately 150 inmates tested. Results return in the quickest turnaround time, which is at least 24 hours. So far into the testing exercise, results for officers have returned negative outcomes. However, the Ministry of Health has confirmed 10 new COVID-19 positive cases among inmates. Those inmates were already in quarantine. Minister for Home Affairs Honorable Dr. Virginia Albert Poyat has indicated that there will be improved measures in the coming days to protect the inmates. 
A review of screening process for visitors will also be introduced. The Miku Library is now better prepared to execute online programs and activities as the Ministry of Education presented a consignment of digital devices to the institution last Wednesday. Chris Sapley has more in this report. The Miku Library has over the years undergone necessary transformation that will allow it to provide services to its clientele through programs that build literacy through the use of modern technology. New technological devices provided to the institution over the years have disappeared due to theft, leaving residents of the community without the necessary platforms that will help bridge the digital divide. It is for this reason the Ministry of Education saw it fitting to replace those stolen devices in order to ensure that literacy programs under the Transforming Lives through Early Literacy Project can be resuscitated. Minister for Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology and Vocational Training, Honorable Sean Edward, who spoke at the handing over ceremony at the Miku Library this week, registered the Ministry's commitment to ensuring St. Lucians receive the training required in the use of information and computer technology. As a government and as a ministry, we are big on the incorporation of ICT or technology in education delivery. And for us, education is not what happens within the confines of a classroom in a school building. We believe in lifelong learning. We believe in education where people can acquire knowledge and skills at every turn in the society. So for those persons who are not of school age, they too can come to the library facility on an afternoon, on a weekend, after hours, um, basically to enrich themselves, to broaden their knowledge base, and to acquire information that would cause them to be more effective citizens in society. The minister says government is committed to the reintroduction of the laptop program to secondary schools that will ensure students at that level are not just able to use new technologies, but will be provided with devices required to efficiently undertake their studies. We have given the populace the assurance that the children of St. Lucia will not be left behind as the global education community undergoes changes and it modernizes itself. Our children will not be left behind. We are now at a stage in our development as a country where a laptop or a tablet is no longer a luxurious item. But instead, it is a necessity that will facilitate the education process. Member of Parliament for Mikunov, Honorable Jeremiah Norbert, while thanking the Ministry and the New Zealand Government for the new items, called on constituents who use the library to take care of the new devices and to safeguard them from being stolen. We also like to thank the New Zealand Fund for ensuring that they made this possible in the first place. And as you know, we are a government that puts people first. We understand the importance of such devices, especially given the COVID environment and the challenges brought about by the COVID environment. So we know that this will go a long way in not just assisting, but continuing what has been started. And I know that the librarians look forward to receiving these donations. Permanent Secretary in the Department of Education, Innovation and Vocational Training, Michelle Charles, says the ministry recognizes the need for community libraries to have the necessary devices required to conduct modern programs and pledged the ministry's continued support to this institution and others like it on the island. But we recognize at the Ministry of Education the importance of this initiative, the Transforming Lives and Early Learners Program. We know that it impacts significantly our pre-K students, kindergarten and grade one students. But not only will these devices be used for this demographic, but we note too that our persons within the Miku North constituency regularly come to the, to, the, to the library and use these devices. The Miku Library, with the help of the new devices, will be able to design and implement programs as a supplementary resource for formal instruction. They will also be able to train volunteers to assess and instruct students in various literacy skills and also train parents to work with their children to reinforce the skills already learned. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology and Vocational Training, I am Chris Satney, reporting. 
Winners of the 2021 Quayle Poem Competition funded by UNESCO received prizes and commendation for their contributions to the national competition at a prize-giving ceremony held at the Finance Administrative Center on Tuesday. Daniel Dubois has more in this report. The Quayle Poetry Competition was first launched in February 2019 on the occasion of Mother Language Day and as part of St. Lucia's 40th anniversary of independence. The objective of the competition is to give greater visibility to and promote the use of Quayle language nationally. It also supports another UNESCO-funded initiative, which seeks to advance the implementation of the national language policy, which will promote Quayle as a language of instruction. Secretary General of the National Commission for UNESCO, Marcia Symphorian, said since the 2019 inception of the competition, the team has been pleased to receive several submissions that will soon be published. This year, as part of observances of our 40th anniversary of the establishment of the National Commission for UNESCO and the 40th anniversary of St. Lucia's admission to membership of the Francophonie community, we have decided to undertake a project to have the publication of a collection of Creole poems from our participants. The project will be funded, therefore, by the International Organization for the Francophonie and will see the publication of a collection of 40 poems to commemorate our 40th anniversary. Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture and Information, Senator Honorable Gibeon Ferdinand, spoke at the prize-giving ceremony and congratulated winners and participants for their contribution, highlighting the urgency behind the Quayle language receiving the recognition it deserves. He said its initiatives like these will support this urgent mandate. Tout le temps nous en concept lycien par formaliser langage Quayle là et puis mettre à dire ça nous qu'a curriculum là pour instruire ma à l'école en Quayle même quand nous qu'a instruire en anglais langage là pas qu'a une valeur ici posé. I'll say that in English. Until we formalize the Creole language and put it in the curriculum and teach it to our children in the same way that we teach them English, the language will not get the value and the recognition that it deserves. Out of scores of submissions, three persons came out on top. Third place was given to Jameson Edward, second place Rochelle Victor, and the first place title was captured by Anna Zilta Tench. Ms. Ten says she's elated by the news and looks forward to competing again. My name is Anna Zilta Ten. It was a pleasure, pleasure taking part in this competition. I always love our Creole language because it's more expressive than English. And I believe it's a wonderful thing that UNESCO is promoting to have this competition because it encourages me, because I took part last year, it encourages me to do better and learn more. So. I didn't expect I would win. <laughs> I just wanted to take part. Also present at the prize-giving ceremony was the deputy director of the regional Francophonie office based in Haiti, Musa Sinan, currently on island meeting of stakeholders and various entities seeking to strengthen ties and engage on several levels. From the communications unit of the Ministry of Education, Sustainable Development, Innovation, Science, Technology and Vocational Training, I am Daniel Dubois reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Primus Hutchinson is up next. Stay with us. The Department of Finance has introduced the Electronic Government Procurement System, EGP. The EGP system has many benefits for stakeholders involved in government procurement. And government seeks to adopt a strategic approach to its purchasing process. Electronic government procurement improves efficiency of procurement and enhances data capture. The EGP is innovative and will automate the sequence from notification, receiving and evaluation of submissions to final contract award. It improves communication between vendors and the government agencies, provides greater transparency and builds confidence in the vendor community through increased access to information. To participate, Vendors, suppliers, and contractors must register on the electronic government procurement platform. EGP, improving efficiency and transparency in the acquisition of goods, works, and services. Welcome back. 
We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Creole. Monsieur Ta, Janel. Monsieur, Madame, Department of Responsibility for Information and Government of Settlers, ça c'est GIS, à ce moment-là, Télévision Nationale, PIA, NTN, qui a posé une nouvelle à Creole, présente au Primus Hutchinson. Ministre de Responsabilité pour Santé et qui a fait les plus grands citoyens en gouvernement de cette honorable Moses Jabatis, j'ai informé la nation concernant la nécessité pour encore placer cet échangement concernant le WEG et bien ce protocole-là qui est en place pour la protection de la maladie corona. Honorable Jabatis, encore renforcé pour un concernant la nécessité pour la WEG en place et que même si le délai moun ka trouvé contrayé parce que ces restrictions ça là ka pri en pied yo c'est fo yo comprendre que c'est santé nation qui gouvernement ka bataille pour préserver mais en plus de ça à part de ça ministre santé a pris une apologie concernant la situation financement semaine avant côté les touristes dehors en public dimanche là les tout moun te supposé rester à caï il dit que ça c'est yon qui gouvernement pas supporter mais de les les ouais qu'a fait mais c'est une situation que le gouvernement pas qu'a supporté en pièce face au gouvernement ça c'est un bagage nous même qui a toujours parlé à um, l'air avec nous nous pas d'accord avec ce bagage ça là avec manière fait là c'est pas comme ça nous t'es vrai fait avec nous qu'a continuer de dire au gouvernement nous qu'a pas apologie pour ce cette ici parce que c'est pas ce bagage ça là nous croire de à des ça ça pas pa chez nous ça pas la fa, la foi nous nous pas voulons continuer en situation côté sept lycéens qui qui fait euh qui qui fait monde qui fait yo quoi qui fait nous quoi qui l'année décalé sept lycée qui monde qui a visité sept lycée ça aller côté avec Jean sept lycée pas ça aller côté comme ça nous garder situation encore avec nous garder qui manière nous qui changer protocole là pour bailler tout monde en chance monsieur Baptiste dit qui il ca comprendre qui nos police les officiers pour pied l'autre qui a travaillé plusieurs années temps, ni brisé un petit moment pour la dire venir, timiet. Mais la situation est critique toujours. Le ministre de la Santé a fait comprendre que le gouvernement a décidé pour faire un petit changement à ce protocole-là pour aider à soulager la situation. Nous avons dit à présent que le dimanche, nous avons mis le protocole-là pour tout le monde, cette liste, avec les gens qui ont visité le pays, nous, les 5 heures, pour moun aller la caillou aller dedans avec wété dedans avec wété avec famille ou nous ka gade changement ça pour pour affecter tout monde avec nous ka mandé tout cette lycée tout monde qui ka visiter place nous pour faire ça seul bagay nous ka di c'est le dimanche là nous ka mandé tout monde qui ka vendre alcool pour le dimanche là à laisser beach là laisser les plages là avec monde qui ka vendre alcool pour le dimanche là pour pas vendre alcool avec nous qui mettez ça en protocole là nous ni l'idée c'est action ça là qui aide en situation parce que nous qui fait bien exacte covid là nous pas qui fait um, 100% mais nous qui fait bien et nous pas vle situation vie monter expressement après noël avec après saison que monde qui a participé en pli activité sociale peu pays qui a souffert et puis mauvais maladie comme pisado pressure cancer battement de cœur parmi d'autres j'ai trouvé conseil pour prendre l'avantage de la vaccine contre maladie corona grand grec pour sorte des ménagement covid 19 monsieur Clayton Springer explique qui yon 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 chai qui tue lou à sous doyo et il dit qui pendant cette lycée qui a essayé pour conseiller et encourager cette lycée pour prendre l'avantage de la vaccine contre la maladie corona, l'année agence un grand pays international qui a présenté des formations pour décourager les citoyens. M. Springer fait comprendre que ça c'est un qui a chagriné longtemps, mais il a fait cette lycée comprendre que les gens prennent la vaccine, ils ont plus de capacité pour abattre mauvais maladie ça là. Bon, vaccine non, comme tu as expliqué l'autre jour. Si vous êtes ici, normalement, ok, ou pas trop malade, ok, ou pas trop malade, comme ça. So, immunité ou faux, so ou là. L'autre fait vaccine, il y a un peu là. Right? Il y a un peu de force. So, là, si vous avez COVID là, 
this usatafiku villa called Pierce Law Disease. Ikai Porto Peter Sir. Ni Pate Ipake Porto Business. So la Evacu Papo vaccine, Evacu Munitu la. La Covid la pon, Ikai just this and this. Chairman, pour ce décommand pour COVID-19, là, vous remarquez que ça y a travail à ce à présent. C'est pour encourager les gens qui ne sont pas d'accord pour prendre la vaccine, pour suivre et obéir à ce protocole-là, pour préserver et protéger l'autre monde en public. Là. Nous avons encouragé les gens pour, ok, vous ne pouvez pas prendre la vaccine, mais observez ce protocole-là. Pour les cas, vous pouvez mettre les gens pour renforcer l'immunité ou comme ça. Right? Um, Dormi bien, boire de l'eau, brancher avec l'eau, um, um, point vitamine C, c'est bien ça. Vous avez point zinc. Tout ce bien ça, quand il y a de l'eau pour une pour, pour, pour plus force. Vous êtes positif, un cas est consiste pour parler de soude vie fort. On est là, Dr. Kenny Anthony. J'ai parlé concernant des grèves violences par physique et revolver que j'ai placé, c'est comme une adhérence mauvaise pérez et qui aussi a une cause plusieurs la mort. Dernière situation, c'était un dit en finissement si maintenant, côté un madame trouvé physique. Selon Dr. Anthony, plusieurs à ses résidents, Jacques Yassoui, pour montrer la manière de concerner et aussi des gré pérez qui a saisi ce témoin et par conséquence, ces violences là. Le représentant du Parlement, pour soulever fort, dit que ça c'est une situation qui est très critique et que ça n'est pas acceptable pour que j'en vie fort. Uh, ni si quantité pérez pour marcher en la rue après ça. Alors, Dr. Anthony, j'ai engagé la police pour ça déterminer qui est le jeune homme qui a été inspiré. C'est avec des grèves pour les gens qui ont été Dr. Anthony déclare qu'il compte la situation là, notamment avec des grèves violences côté les mal foutus par les pièces respectées pour la loi, c'est ici, avec la vie citoyenne. Il a ajouté que le 3 janvier fort, j'ai perdu la vie et ben j'ai trouvé blessé sérieusement. Il fait comprendre que la police n'a pas perdu la cap pour trouver ce qui est responsable et pour faire tout ce qui est possible pour que ce qui est coupable pour ce crime ça là paraît devant la loi. Dr. Anthony dit que le chef de police a pour mettre que la police a pris contrôle de la situation ça là. Et que le représentatif là a fait un site pour soutenir fort. Dr. Anthony a déclaré qu'il a placé tout ce qui est ces police là et l'autre agence qui travaille présentement. Pour que ces malfaiteurs la trouvent arrêtés, parce que la pareille n'est pas solution tout le temps. Loi pays a parti où ces aménagements là, en la main ces criminels là à face à des sud bien fort. Et c'est comme ça. Nous avons trouvé une nouvelle mesdames et messieurs. Mon cher Monsieur Otta, pour qu'à garder, mon cher Monsieur Invitation, pour que je ne puisse moins encore. C'est des conseils de la vie. Dans quelques jours, nous allons trouver une nouvelle. Ah, quoi alors? Pour ça, mon cher Monsieur Otta, Chanel. Merci Apple Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am General Norville.